You guys are ready? Yeah. Uh, y'all don't sound, y'all don't convince. You, are you guys ready? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to do something. If you're sitting down, I'm going to ask you to stand up. And then you can stay here, just surround the area. So before we start, um, before we start, I'm going to lead us in prayer. So if we can, are you guys excited? I'm excited as well. I want to leave you with a verse. Can I leave you with a verse? All right, and I want to welcome you. I want to thank you for coming to Who You Follow in Just One Night Worship. This is our, we put this together in uh, literally about a year, and we were preparing for this time, and if I could tell you how I met the, the lead singer, if I could tell you how I met Phil, it's, it's crazy. I'll leave that for a podcast episode, because it was, it, was, it was a good encounter, but a scary one. But look, um, as we get ready, uh, I want to leave you with a verse, and the verse that I want to leave you with is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. And I believe that this verse, if we're going to come into worship, I, I'll pray that this is the posture of your heart. I want you to understand when it comes down to worship, worship is not about your the, your, the emotional experience. It's not about that. It's not about the fact that how loud, how loud you can sing. It's not about that. It's about the posture of your heart. We come to serve and we come to worship a risen king. Amen. Amen. So, so as we get into it, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 says this. It says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And it says, I will put within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of, watch this, of flesh. So if you experience the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, if you trusted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, nothing else, no works, no nothing, but the cross and what Christ accomplished for you tonight, you should be worshiping him and him alone. Amen. So as we get into it, Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, your love. We thank you, God, for this opportunity, Lord Jesus, that we get to just, man, fellowship with the body of Christ. And we get to uplift your holy name, Lord, because you're holy. And we thank you, God, for this time. And for those that are still on their way, Father God, allow them to come safely. And for these that are here, allow them to experience you. Because everything can change in just one night. And I pray, Father God, that this is the night that hearts are softened. And if you, they have not trusted you as your Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that they trust you tonight. And that you are magnified and glorified. And you are exalted above all. So I now present to you incense music. And let's get to worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Y'all ready to worship tonight? Come on, let's do it. Here is love fast as the ocean. Loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of For us is precious blood. Just 
Surprise! 
says every knee is going to bow every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord the Bible says if we confess with our mouth that he is Lord on this side of heaven he says that we will be saved there's a story in Acts where somebody tried to cast out a devil in the name of Jesus but they weren't in Christ and they didn't know Jesus and the demon spoke up and said Paul I know and Jesus I know but who are you and demons tremble at the name of Jesus the Bible says that the devil knows that Jesus is Lord but he trembles amen so tonight I want us to sing the name of Jesus because Jesus is the only hope Jesus is the only way Jesus is the only answer and when we say his name there's power demons begin to flee strongholds begin to come down and cities begin to be restored and healed come on somebody tonight let's call upon the name of Jesus why don't you just say his name say Jesus there's power in the name of Jesus see there is power in the name of Jesus oh yes there is power
hear somebody to believe that tonight. Sing, our God is risen. Our God is risen. He is alive. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns. on high. Our God is risen. He's alive. He's alive.
give it up, give it up. So, when we encounter the one true God, everything can change in just one night, amen? When you encounter the one true holy God who is set apart, he sets you apart, amen? So I want to introduce a brother. His name is Sean. He's going to come up here and give a testimony on how God set him apart through the blood of Jesus. Amen. First of all, I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to even be up here. I wrote a little something. <laughs> I grew up as a Christian, but growing up as a Christian and living for Christ are very, very two different things. Uh, at a different time in my life, I didn't know. I thought if I just believed that God was real, then I'm saved. I have nothing to worry about. But about two years ago, I got this urge to truly know who God was. He started calling me. I seen the world, and I seen how a lot of things was going. I started to see how the Bible was literally coming to life in front of my eyes. I started to fear hell. I started to fear God, and I started to fear what would happen to me after I died. I was stuck in an endless cycle of sin. I made excuses for my sin, never took accountability or responsibility. I was going through a lot of problems, problems with my family, my relationship, my life, and just my belief in Christ. I started to experience depression for the first time in my life. Uh, I was down pad for a lot, for many, many months. And I didn't know what to do. And I used my problems as an excuse to continue to sin. I used my sin as a coping mechanism. I know where last year, my homie Vander, I'm not sure where he is right now, but he's a good friend of mine from elementary, and he started hitting me up and inviting me to church. At that time, I didn't think church was useful. Um, like I said, I grew up in church, so I thought it was just a building. But he kept asking me for months and months, and I would tell him the same thing. Yeah, bro, I'm a spy. I got you. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to come through. Yeah, don't worry about it. That went on for months. <laughs> um, it got to the point, you see in my DMs, I didn't want to answer them. <laughs> but nonetheless, I thank God for Vander and his persistence. Without God using Vander, I wouldn't be here. Without God urging me to accept. Without God urging me to accept, I wouldn't be here. Um, I came uh, to Who You Follow back in November and December of 2022. Uh, but I didn't feel genuine. Um, I was still doing my dirt outside of church and going through the things I was going through. So at a point in time, I just stopped coming and resorted back into my old ways. I had this mindset that I had to get myself clean before coming to God. But I didn't know at the time that Christ says, come as you are. Right, I kept trying to fix myself. After months and months of uh, pain and issues and not knowing what to do in May of this year, I, something in me just said, Look at who you follow on YouTube. And uh, I watched about three videos, and this time I was really hooked. I came to the next Bible study, and uh, I, I saw Pastor Hector before, and I went up to him and asked if I could speak to him after service. Going into the church, I had a lot in my head, a lot of pain, a lot of questions, a lot of noise. And <clears throat> in the middle of Hector's teaching, I see why God got me to come back at the time he did. I feel like I wasn't supposed to be here, and I did. 
I didn't want to be here no more. Uh, most of my questions, if not all of them, was already answered before I even got a chance to ask Hector personally. It's like that sermon where he was preaching just for me. And for the first time in months, I had a sense of peace. And for a very long time, all I wanted in my heart was peace. And God answered a prayer I didn't even know I was praying. At this point, after the sermon... Uh, sermon. <clears throat> I just need an ear to vent to. <laughs> so I went up to Hector talking about all I've been going through, hoping that he'll give me comforting words of encouragement. But instead, he called me out on my arrogance and pride. <laughs> <laughs> and said, I got to take Christ a lot more serious. It wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> But it was what I needed. And I thank God for it. It was already hard for me to submit to the people in my life at the time. So when Hector was telling me to submit to a God I didn't know, I, did, I thought he was crazy. Um, but nonetheless, I took his advice and I started to chase God and learn to submit. Uh, I went on a men's trip with my church back in October. And that is truly, truly the first time. I encountered God and his sovereignty. That is when I truly learned what it means to be a man of God. That men's trip was the best I felt in my entire life. And from then, I, uh, I took control of my life by giving Christ all control. being this macho man with his hood up and in the back <laughs> and I really started to give in to what Christ was trying to do for me for a long time I finally started to truly submit and from there it's been nothing but God's glory all over my life he has delivered me from a lot healed me from things I didn't know I needed healing from blessed me with wisdom blessed me with endurance blessed me with peace made me content with my life no longer wanting I am not the same man I was six months ago. I thank God for this new family of Christ. I thank God for Pastor Hector. Because at a time where I thought I lost my big brother, he became. Came with to me. Um, I thank Christ for the pain and the sorrow that he took on, for the, on the cross for me. Christ has given me new life. I thank him for my salvation and redemption. I thank him for my sanctification and strength to deny myself daily. The strength to keep picking up my cross and following him. I thank my father for his grace, mercy, faithfulness, and love. Even when I rejected him, he still loved me. And I rejected him for years. And yet he's still here. <clears throat> I am now a tool in his hands being used to build his kingdom. A verse I hold very dear to me is uh, Matthew 19, 26. With men, this is impossible, but through God, all things are possible. I like to remind myself of this verse because when things got tough, I used to rely on myself to figure it all out. But in, but in the end, I can't. And Lord knows that I can't. And it's such a weight lifted off my shoulders knowing that I can't, but there's a God that can and will. So I thank God for all that he's done, doing, and going to do. I give all my glory and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I give all glory and praise to El Shaddai, for he has given me purpose, for he has given me love like no other, for he has humbled me and showed me the better side of life. I thank him for the truth that he has exposed to me, Expo he exposed me to me. I'm excited for the future knowing that he's going to be right here next to me holding my hand, taking care of the ball. No longer worried about tomorrow. Just continuing to strengthen our relationship and walking in purpose. I love the God that I serve and I'm thankful for who he is. 
I know Christ and he knows me now. All praise to the Most High. And I can never turn back from the path that he set me on. Amen. And he said, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. Come on. Everybody say 
never run out of grace. He said, there's more where that came from. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. Oh, in my blood there is healing. In my name there is breakthrough. He's never running out. He's got more oil. Pouring it out, yes, anoint our hands with oil, anoint our hands with grace, Lord, and order our steps, Lord. We respond in praise, and we respond in worship, we respond in obedience, God.
song they already sing holy 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 are you Lord. just to bow down before your throne see your face i cry out because you're holy holy holy
celebration. It's going to be a party. You might as well dance right now because he's in the room today. He's in the room tonight. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. 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 I like this. I don't know about y'all. But when the prodigal son came home, the father put a robe on his back. He put a ring on his finger. He put sandals on his feet. He said, I don't care where you've been. You're my son. Come on, that's what the Father says to you tonight. That when we get to heaven, it ain't going to be about our good deeds, but it's going to be about his grace. And the Bible says that he put a sandal on his feet. He said, kill the calf because we're going to throw a party back at the house. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but when one sinner comes to the throne of God, by the grace of Jesus and gets into the family of God the Bible says that the angels begin to rejoice so if heaven is rejoicing I say we make it look like heaven on earth tonight come on somebody shout 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 on the victory shout shout somebody you may not know what heaven is going to be like but it's going to be perfection it's going to be beautiful some of you might say I'm excited to see Moses asking about all of the miracles in Egypt some of you might say I'm going to be excited to see David and hear how he wrote all those songs somebody say "I'm, I'm excited to see Daniel and how God rescued him out of Babylon. Some of you might say, I can't wait to see my grandma to see how all of those prayers came to fruition. Okay. Yay. Some of you might say, I'm excited to see daddy because I hadn't seen him in a long time. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm excited to see Jesus. Hey. He said, when I look upon his face, okay. the one who saved me by his grace. Yes. When we all get to heaven, we're going to shout. And I love this. This is right from the scripture. It says, he saw me coming from a long way off. He put a robe and a ring on a child that was lost. Up in the house, there's a party going on right now. Come on, sing it, Marissa. Tell him, say it. saw me coming from a long way off. tonight 
This is Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. David says this, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. That is worship. Surrender. It's not all about just in just one night. It's about when you leave this place tonight. Music, music is great. It feels great. And we use it to worship God. Amen? Amen. But worship is a lifestyle of obedience. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you want to surrender your hearts tonight, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what sin you're struggling with. I don't even know if you're truly born again. But tonight is a night of surrender. And you do what you are designed to do, and that is worship our Lord. Amen? Amen. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Can we lift up our hands and surrender to God? Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you for that old rugged cross we just sung about. It's not just a song, Lord God, it's reality. Jesus, you came, you died for us to give us life, to not only be free from the penalty, the penalty of sin, but the power of it as well. So tonight, Jesus, those sins, those anxieties, that pornography, whatever the case may be, Lord Jesus, we submit it at your feet and say, Lord God, I surrender. Jesus, tonight we surrender to you because you're worthy of it all. You deserve our surrender. Our lives are yours, Lord Jesus. Our lives are in your hands. We thank you for being so gracious. We thank you for being so patient with us, Lord God. So let the rest of this night, Lord Jesus, be no different from how it's going to be in heaven. So we thank you for that. We join the angels and sing tonight. Hallelujah. You're a holy God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Prophesy, decided these balls of peace. 
out of mind. Won't you breathe on me? Cause you make beauty out of broken things. So take my life as an offering. There is no time that you can redeem. Won't you breathe on me? Jesus. Come on, let's worship him right now. There's no time that God can't redeem. Somebody just walked up to me today and said they hadn't seen me in 10 years. And that I was there when they were, they were baptized. I baptized them. There's people in the room tonight that maybe you've been doing life with for a long time. Or maybe you just met recently at church. Or maybe people in your past that we've yet to meet. Everything is for a purpose. Everything is for a season. You heard the testimonies tonight. God is the one who redeems the time. The Bible says he'll restore the years that the locust has eaten. Some of you tonight, you said, I should be further by now. There's some things in my life I wish I was already doing. There's some things in my life that, God, how am I going to get there? What happened when the disciples encountered Jesus and they didn't know what to do with what they had just witnessed? But Jesus breathed his spirit on them. He said, I'm about to empower you. And he did more in one night on the day of Pentecost than we'd ever seen. You could ever do by yourself. And God could do that tonight if he breathes on us. I believe if he breathes on all of us, he empowers us. You can see the years that the devil tried to steal, the years that the locusts tried to eat up, the years that you thought were lost, they were all for a purpose because he's working all things together for your good. And so that detour that you took was actually a reroute to your destiny. It was actually a reroute to put you in the right position, in the right room to meet the right person tonight. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our worship saying, there's no time that God can't redeem. There's no time wasted when God is working. Just like the potter with the clay, he doesn't waste any of the clay. He remolds it. He puts it back on the spindle and he begins to shape it and to mold it. The areas of your life, the weaknesses, the Bible says he, where you are weak, he is strong. He's using our weakness for his glory. He's using our the years that we thought were lost. He's using it and he can redeem the time in one moment, in one night. He can restore it tonight. God, we just declare and we prophesy tonight. That the years that the devil tried to steal out of our lives, they weren't in vain. Those were years that you were teaching us and you were drawing us to yourself. The years in the wilderness were not in vain, Lord. And you're teaching us, you're drawing us, you're using us. You're shaping us. Every broken area and every broken part for the glory of God. He's been so good. Everything he's done is for his goodness. It's because of his goodness. Every loss... Bible says I counted as gain tonight. You make beauty out of broken things. So take my life as an offering. And there is no time that you can't redeem. Won't you breathe on me? So you make beauty. You make beauty out of broken things. So take my life as an offering. And there is no time that you can't redeem. Won't you breathe on me? There is no time that you can redeem. Won't you breathe on me? Won't you breathe on me?
going to tell you to come to church tomorrow. Amen? Amen. I'll preach tomorrow, not today. Because I believe that the Spirit of God is already preaching to you personally. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? So if you came and just touch somebody, and the person that you're touching, I just want you to just start praying for them. Just real quick, pray for them. You don't know what you're praying about, just pray. We're going to thank God in this moment. This is His night, not ours. In Jesus' name. His grace alone, His grace alone. I just want you to know that you can be free tonight. Because of Christ alone and nothing else. off this platform I don't want to I don't want to assume anything just because we're here I don't I don't want to assume that everyone in this room is saved I don't want to I don't want to be remiss I'll be remiss if I don't mention this if you if your head's down eyes closed I just want to tell you that you and I are born sinners separated from God there's no remedy to that there is nothing that you can do no works no church attendance no nothing no worship music, no emotion we experience, nothing could change that but Christ and the cross. So if you have not trusted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I just want to tell you this. Real quick, man, I just want to say you're missing out. Because died, Christ died on the cross for you and I. According to scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved, he sent his son into the world to die a sacrificial death for you and I. And all you have to do is put your faith in him and him alone and nothing else. No good works. No praying to a Catholic priest in the booth. 
no offense, no anything, no works, no nothing, no baptism, no nothing. Christ and Christ alone. And today, not tomorrow, today is the day of salvation. Tonight is the night of salvation. I don't want to assume this on anyone. You walk out of here and God forbid if something happened. I just want to tell you that Christ died for you. And your life can change tonight. The trajectory of your life, you was going one way. And Jesus says, now nah, I'm going to take you this way. And I'm going to tell you that path is very narrow. It's not wide. The world, the culture, it'll tell you it's wide. It's not wide. It is a narrow path. And if you follow Christ, he'll take you right through that narrow path in Jesus' name. So if you have not trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, before you walk out of this building, if someone with a tag, put your tags up. Anybody who got a tag. I want you to see them so they can pray for you. And, and if you're looking for a church home, man, we open. <laughs> see the people with the tags as well. Besides that, heads down, let me pray. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Father God, even for the band, Lord. That you have anointed their voices, Jesus, to praise you. So we thank you, Father God, for this night. We know that this night is for you and you alone. Because one day we'll be standing before you, Jesus, and all we have is a hallelujah. All we have is a I thank you, Jesus. And we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your sacrifice, and we thank you for this moment, and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. And the church say, Amen.
Tonight, it's been a pleasure and it's been a privilege to, to be right at the feet of Jesus with you. And uh, this is our prayer tonight, that God would establish you. He said in Psalm 19, he wants to, their, the prayer of Israel was, God, establish the work of our hands. And so what he's calling you to do tonight, we go out and do it. We go out and obey. Obedience, he says, is better than sacrifice. So we've heard the word and now we act upon it. And Lord, I pray you'd set us into action and you to establish and you to order our steps you give us clear direction and sure footing i hear the lord say sure footing for you tonight as you step out in faith he's going to provide the way his words going to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path when we sing this one song it says plant my feet on higher ground
Thank you guys tonight. We love you. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Can we do one thing? Can we give it up for the band? We, we just want to personally thank you guys so much for leading us in worship. Guys, truly, thank you for leading us so much. If you guys want to support them, their merch is in the back. Please do that. Please do that. Uh, at least take a look. You know what I'm saying? Connect with them. Get to know them. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, don't leave in a rush. Uh, there's so much more fellowship to do. There's food trucks out there. And let not the worship end here. Tomorrow at 11 a.m. at North Hylia Baptist Church. The worship continues. So join us for service. Pastor Hector will be preaching. Amen. Amen. Sound biblical teaching. Amen. So we just want to thank you. Um, we have our merch in the back as well. Brand new designs, brand new hoodies, brand new hats. So check that as well. Support us. Take, take a look. Um, so we thank you guys so much. If we could do one thing, one thing. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Yeah, 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 Amen. yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Father, we thank you for a night of worship. A night surrendered to you, a night dedicated to you. And as I said before, Lord God, just a reminder of what we were designed to do. Let every night be in just one night. Because every day walking with you is a transformative experience. Because you are a transformative God. And when we encounter you, change is bound to happen. You are worthy to be praised. Be with us now. Bless this fellowship. Bless the food. Bless all of our endeavors from here on out. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.